Hello everyone and welcome to another Star Citizen Addix Anonymous and here we are inside of my amazing brand new 29 40 whatever Aurora LX. Now this isn't what we're going to be talking about today but it's a little bit about where we're at right now. We are flying around the universe trying to make money but in the grand scheme of things I think we should be... I, I parked right near this... Yep, that's where I parked just about a day ago. I parked right near one of the broken down derelict stations that are over by the Lagrange points. In other words, by the rest stops. My day has been nuts. I want to talk to you about a couple of things today. And we have to do this as commentary well I'm playing for two reasons. One is, I've had to upgrade my video editing rig, which I've been using a 2013 iMac for the last seven years. Well, 2012 iMac for the last seven years. It wasn't a 2013. I essentially got it the first video that I ever did for Star Citizen. I got that computer just a few days before and it was what sparked me coming into the Star Citizen universe and doing videos. So you could thank the wonderful iMac for the reason why I started doing videos. Well that iMac has seen better days, um, better days a long time ago, like three years ago was probably the end of its best days, um, well, maybe four years ago. It was an i7-4770 it was running at 3.4 gigahertz. It had 32 gigs of RAM, but it didn't really have that great of a graphic card. It had the mobile version of the, uh, I think it was a 680 from NVIDIA, which only had, I believe, 4 gigs. If it had 8 gigs, that was a lot, but I think it was 4 gigs. And believe it or not, those first few Star Citizen videos, I should say the first year of Star Citizen videos, let's see, September? October, November, December, January, February, March, um, the first eight and a half to nine months of Star Citizen videos. That's where we're at. We're actually done by me playing the game on the iMac. Now, don't say this doesn't work on a Mac. Obviously, it doesn't work on a Mac under Mac OS. But it did work on the Mac under Boot Camp, or I should say, with windows installed on a second partition and that was a wonderful experience for me because it gave me an opportunity to actually get into star citizen from the computer that i owned at that time and yes it could have been a miserable experience but it wasn't it was actually pretty good I do have to say that all right i'm not going to pick up a shipment from Morvel gate 6 and i'm not going to our and are yeah I'm not doing that one let's see if we can get a better one this one's going to be from L19 Metro Station in Lorville to L1 they gotta be nuts alright this one is from CRU L4 to Green Imperial let us know we'll accept that one I have no idea what Green Imperial is I've never been there so at least this will be something that will give me something fun to do. So let's get out and then we'll continue talking about where I'm at. C CRU L4 is our pickup site. Let's get us pointed in the right direction and then we'll have a long journey with which to fly around. How many? That's, that's about five minutes, maybe a little bit more on this ship. All right, let's go. All right. So, it gave me an opportunity, that iMac, to enjoy the game on a 27-inch screen with amazing graphics. And, of course, I upgraded from that to a... Oh, what did I build first? I bought an AMD... 9730, which is still sitting in the other room. I built a machine to specs that my friend Onion gave me and that actually did well for quite a long time and obviously now I'm on a 7700K 32 gigabytes of 
PC3200 Corsair Dominator Platinum and a 20, well, you know, a 2080. I have a great computer for playing the game. But I rely on my Mac. I'm a Final Cut user. I love using my Mac and I don't want to hear anything about it because it, it's, to me, the Mac is amazing. And of course it's because of who I work for, but that's what it is. So it started to drag its heels a little bit and I decided that I was going to partake in Apple Give Back, and I was going to donate, not donate, trade it in so I can get money towards it. I sent them an iPhone 8 that I had. I sent them that. It's going to give me about $700, $715 for the two products, and it's going to reduce the cost of the machine that I'll be buying, which is a Mac Mini. I'm going to do a 6-core i7, and I already have the graphic card. It's an eGPU external unit. I think you've heard about this already. It's actually powering my... Uh, it's powering or connected to my... I've got to get this right. Hmm... It's currently connected to my, and I, I, you know what, I'm scared to say this, but my MacBook Air. And that's the interim video editing pro platform I have right now. And the problem is, the Air only has two Thunderbolt 3 ports. I need more. I need one Thunderbolt 3 port for the external hard drive that makes it possible for me to even edit on there. And for the graphic card that makes it possible for me to even edit on that device. But when everything is connected nice, nice, it works. But I have no space to connect a microphone. And I'm not going out to buy a Thunderbolt dock when within the next two weeks to four weeks, I'll be getting a Mac Mini to replace all this. And the reason I say two weeks to four weeks is because, well, I still have to wait for the gift card to be generated from the Apple Give Back program um, because I just sent in my iMac two days ago. And I still have to wait for the device to be built because I'm doing a build to order, getting the i7 6 core instead of the i5, getting 32 gigs of RAM instead of 8, and getting a 1 terabyte drive instead of nothing. And I've seen the specs on this. This should take me a little bit deeper into the future than my iMac because I have an external graphic card. I'll be able to upgrade it every time AMD. And yes, I said AMD because... AMD supports Apple's graphic system, which is called Metal, which I think has something in common with Vulkan, but I don't know what that is. But Apple uses their own graphic API called Metal, and I do not believe that by their own choice, NVIDIA is making drivers for their cards for that yet, and I could be wrong. So I'm just going to stay out of that and just say, I just can't put an NVIDIA card in there right now because NVIDIA doesn't provide any drivers for their cards. And it could be something totally different, but who cares? The whole point of this conversation was, I'm kind of stuck not being able to put out videos the way I want to. But it doesn't mean that I can't talk to you about Star Citizen. And, you know, I've been doing this playthrough for a little bit, and I've gotten myself up to 36K just running these stupid delivery missions. And these delivery missions are kind of okay for where I'm at right now because I'll start one up, I'll start reading um, some of the reading that I have to do for school. I just looked up and saw one of my books is missing, which means... I have a problem, but anyway, I'll be reading or I'll set myself on this path and I'll go and do my laundry or I'll go downstairs and clean up the kitchen and I'll come back and I'll be all ready to go get something. And I've got these timed down pretty much to be about 15 to 20 minutes a run. And I don't mean a full run, I mean a half a run. And that's because this quantum drive is so slow. And it's starting to make me wonder if there's just not enough of the game out right now for you actually to get somebody new into the game to enjoy it if they're not going to be willing to spend some money. 
So I'm still evaluating that and still saying, you know what, maybe my problem here is that I didn't upgrade the quantum drive. That's something that we're going to do today. I'm going to waste 16 or 20 grand or whatever it is and see if it fixes anything. Hopefully it does. If it doesn't, say lovey, right? We could only buy things. We can't sell things right now. And you know, I don't mind making four runs to get 16k back if I waste it. So other things that are going on in Star Citizen, and obviously I've taken my sweet time doing this, and I swear I wish I was able to do post commentary. I could connect a microphone to my Mac, my uh, MacBook Air, but that's not going to happen right now. So let's talk a little bit about two things. The first thing is going to be I'm going to pick one thing this episode and I'll try to pick one thing every episode that I think is going to be amazing in 3.5 and I know you all think I'm gonna say the female model I just think the female model is needed to bring more diversity into the game to make it more a living and breathing place but I don't think that's the most important thing for me some people might say all right she's gonna say our corp and yes, our corp is amazing because it gives you even more places to go to and you can finally go to an Area 18 that makes sense. That is a place that you could fly into and fly out of and not get run over by gray cats. Oh, that's just a joke for anybody that actually played the game early on and they had the gray cats flying around. Oh god, I gotta get in there real quick because that guy might be doing the same mission as me and he might be sneaking in there to steal that box. We're gonna try to beat him. Aurora is a really fast ship. Alright, but it's, it's not even that. It's not even that. I think the most important piece of this game is going to be being able to, to deck out your ships the way that you want. Have them painted, order them with the equipment that you want on them. I think that's going to be amazing. That new system that they're putting in with the 300 series is going to be just incredible. And I can't wait for that to be implemented. So that's pretty much it for me on that. Because everything else is all stuff that has to be in there, right? But that, in and of itself, is the one piece that's going to make things start to look different. Start to be diversified in this game. I can't wait for that. So, I, I also know that there's other things coming in. There's some gameplay elements. There's some new mission givers inside of 3.5 but those are all things that I want to be able to talk about when I can do post commentary and actually point things out as I look at everything Landing complete. so today RSI no sorry it's not even RSI it's Argo 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 that faithful company that gave us the Argo cargo <laughs> <laughs> the Argo MPV has come out with a SRV, which essentially is a tow truck. And I think this ship is going to be the most amazing ship in the game for immersive gameplay. You think I'm crazy because it's $130 and it's a tow truck. You think I'm crazy because... It's $130, and it doesn't have any real offensive capabilities. You think I'm crazy for many reasons, but I'm going to tell you, I ain't crazy. First off, let's think about this. They pulled scavenging from 3.5, right? I do not believe that it's in there at all right now. And if you think about how a scavenger works... A scavenger might have to work with one of these ships to pull a ship out of some place so it could be scavenged or even just collected and brought back. So I look at this ship as being a necessity for those type of situations. 
And I think that that in and of itself can be why scavenging. Yep, see what I mean? He took it. He took it. See, so if I can get it, I've done one of these where I did it and I got all the way somewhere and I couldn't close it out. I hope that these are two different, two and completely different missions. But what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to run over here. So it is entirely possible that the SRV is the missing piece. And there's no way it's going to be done by the time that they put scavenging in there. But it could be the missing piece to the scavenging gameplay. And just having that in... Oh, I hit lobby. That's stupid. Just having it in the game gives people an idea of what type of ship is going to be needed for that. But who cares if I'm right or wrong or whatever about that. It makes sense that it could be used for scavenging. But honestly, I think... And this is what I see. Emerging gameplay. People line up between four asteroids or ten asteroids, whatever, in the asteroid field of Yella. Five men on a team. A constellation derelict in the center. You've got two SRVs and four Aurars on each team. And the object of the game is to pull, and I'm saying this right, is to pull the Constellation across your goal line. Oh, come on. That would be a good game. We'd all take part of it because it's, what's, it's what Chris Roberts wants. It's emerging gameplay. And I think that is going to be utterly <laughs> insane. It's going to be awesomeness, awesome sauce. So let's just get up in the air. Come on, come on. Let's go find where we have to go. There's our drop-off point. Let me gear up. Okay. And I think I could just point in this direction and do this, right? I have no idea if we have enough fuel to do this right now. I didn't check my fuel. All right. So I think I have to do this, right? F2. Dumbass. All right. Yes, I just called myself a dumbass. Where are we going? We're going to Crusader system. And we are going to yellow. Okay. Set route to yellow. All right. Route to yellow set. Pull it. All right. That's good. I'm on our way to yellow. So I think that the emergent gameplay that could come out of having this ship, especially if they were to... Um, throw it into the pipeline and get it done pretty quickly like they did the um, MPV, MPU, whatever it is, MPV or the uh, Argo Cargo. I think it will ha we'll have some fun with it. Do I think it's worth $130? I'm not sure. I, I honestly can't tell you because I don't know or even have I have an idea what the scavenging gameplay is going to be like, but I, I don't know how many people are really going to spend more than 1, 2, or 3% of their time in a ship like the Argo SRV. And I think that the ship is going to be one of those ships that a lot of collectors go out and buy. And some people that are reading between the lines that this could be an important ship for things like scavenging, I think that this is going to be a one of those ships that 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 gets purchased but mostly because of a the ship a holics like myself and and i'm not buying one right now because really i'm saving for that mac mini and although i would love absolutely love to have one for my collection i can get it in game sometime after doing five thousand of these missions i'm sure but it is something that i like because i would like something unique like that in my inventory but not something i'm going to go out of my way to purchase right right this very second i think it's pretty cool that cig is looking at these elements of the game um but i don't know how they're going to entice us to actually spend that much time in a role of being a tugboat 
Now, I do have some other situations where this might be an important, um, an important ship. There are ways for ships to become disabled, and there are going to be ships big enough to bring other ships onto them. So we can look at the Crucible, and we could look at the um, we could look at something like the Idris, right? It's going to be able to carry a number of fighters on it. We could even look at something like the Polaris, which is going to be able to hold a fighter, right? So I'm thinking about the faithful day when Operation Pitchfork is a go. And I can think about this ship being needed to recover some of the disabled ships that we might have being victims of the overwhelming forces that the Van Duel are going to have. But I even think of it in another way. How many people are going to be going into this going, they want to get themselves a blade or a glaive or a whatever the name of their bomber is or a scythe and they didn't buy it. And you know, some of the ways, the only ways to get authentic Vandal ships, not the Asperia lookalikes, is going to be to recover them from the Vandal themselves. So if there are going to be disabled Vandal ships floating around in space after those faithful, honorable, heroic members of Operation Pitchfork go through and take back, well, take back the rightful sector of the UEC. You know, I keep on trying to uh, bounce around this. I know Orion, I forget if it's the Tiber system or something. I, it's been so long since I even looked at this. But I, I know that there, there's going to be a need for this to actually take disabled ships. And I think that in and of itself gives this ship a lot of necessity in some pe people's hands, especially the ones that want to collect ships from the Vanduul the way that we're being told that we're going to need to. Um, and then, of course, they just sell us Asperia lookalikes if we want them, but, you know, it's all up to us, right? The way that we want to play this game. The other thing that went on sale, there's like three things. There's a cherry red Cyclone, which I just have to have. Um, and, well, there's four things, right? <laughs> there's the SRV. There's the Cherry Red Cyclone. There's the Heartfelt, or whatever they call it, Hornet. And then there's an 85X. So, I can tell you from my 85X, it's a great ship. If you don't have one, go out and buy it. It's pretty fun to run around in. It's a nice-looking ship, and it would make a great addition in something like... Uh, oh, I, it comes with it, I think, possibly. Maybe not. The runabout is different. Ah, oh, I'm kind of confused. Is the 85X the ship that actually comes on the 800 Jump? Hmm. That's a good question. I can't remember. But if it is, that's a good ship. But the Hornet was interesting to me because, not because I'm going to run out and spend more money on a Hornet I already own two of, but because I could go out and buy the weapons myself and install them. Right now, I just couldn't get the skin, but skins might be sold later that will be even better than this, or maybe next Valentine's Day they sell the skin instead of just the ship. I don't know. But the fact that this is three M5 and one M6 bearing um, lasers, laser cannons, that thing has the firepower of a small Corvette. Um, well, not really, but you know what I'm saying. It's got a lot of firepower. What, what size power plant does that thing have to have to fire those lasers consistently? and to power the coolers that it's going to take to keep those things cool. I mean, that's that, that's a good question, right? It's going to need a lot of power to handle all those energy weapons and the shields, because I think it has heavier shields also, and the coolers to cool everything down. 
that is just absolutely insane. Um, I think that's almost it for what's on sale because, eh, you know, I used to be the person that would run out and buy everything first, and who knows, as I start getting back into the game and start pushing forward with everything I want to do in Star Citizen these days, maybe that continues to happen. All right, where are we pointing to? Oh, there it is. We have to point to that marker right there. OM1. All right, right there. Sometimes I get a little bit lost when I'm playing this game. I'm sorry, folks, especially when I'm talking to you. So that's pretty much all I want to talk about right now. We'll have these conversations as time goes on, and I'll talk a little bit more deeply about things. But I really want to put things into context, like why does it matter and not what's it all about? Because there's so many people that regurgitate the news that CIG puts out in their videos that I think by the time you get to mine, it's like, all right, all right, all right, I heard this a million times. What can you tell me about it? Why do I want it? And I'm going to tell you this. Of all the things that came out, of all the ships that were just put on sale, you probably just want the SRV because of the potential that it has for creating emergent gameplay, capturing disabled ships, or just being that one ship that you don't own that you want to own that's in your hangar. Outside of that, wait for the game to go live and make some money in the game and go out and get it if you really want it. All right, so I want to end this conversation tonight with just a little bit about where we're at, where I'm at in this playthrough. Because I've been playing this game for a solid week now and in a week, in a week, and I can tell you it's only about 12 hours of gameplay and really only about 10 hours of gameplay because some of that gameplay was actually, is that where we're going? That's where we're going? Oh, we're going to Grimhacks. I didn't read that right. Oh God, I'm an idiot. So anyway. As we take this and point our way to Grimhex. Um, so how about that for a problem? We crashed. And I was talking about gameplay and how long it's taken me to get to where I'm at. It's just insane. So we got to go to Grimhex. Let's get that route set. Let's get that laid in. Where's our course? All right. So where are we going? Where is Grimhex? There is Grimhex. It's too close. We actually got there. All right. There's a lot of graphical glitching going on right now, which is kind of nuts. I'm not sure why that's happening at all. Anyway, I've played this game close to 10 or 12 hours for the last week, and I drained my... All right, folks. We had a couple of errors there. We were crashing all over the place, and uh, it looks like we're back to wherever we want to be over here. There may be a nefarious person over here, but we're going to still s try to slide in here. There's still some graphical glitching going on. So I played about 12 hours of gameplay over the last week. Not a whole bunch, but enough to, uh, enough to find that... I really like the game again, but also enough to determine that it takes a lot to make money in this game with starter ships. I know I started this at the beginning and I said we'd talk about it again. I just want to end on this note. It might be frustrating at the very, very, very beginning. Green Imperial Landing Services. Okay, we got it. But I, I really think that I'm going to stick with it because I want to see just what it takes to make the money that you need to get something like a ship that would be one step up for what we have right now. And I'm thinking that might be a freelancer or, well, we'll see. We'll see what we can get. I do not believe we can buy a ship here, right? we got to go to Levski to see what ships are available. I've already been, uh-oh, what the hell are you doing? All right, that that guy was being a pain in the ass. All right, let's get out here. Let's grab our stuff and see how much money we make from this drop-off. 
Oh god, hopefully we don't get glitched out again. Let's hope. Here's hoping. Here's hoping that these glitches go away. I think it's a lighting glitch. Just get out of here. It might be lighting. I wonder if it's the game or if it's my computer. I do have a 2080 and that could be bad. Alright, so do we still have this in our hand? Yeah, I've had it actually fall out of my hands a couple of times while walking. That's kind of nuts. Alright, so we talked about the game. We talked about some of the new additions that they've just had. We talked about ships that are for sale. And we talked about my impressions of things. This is whack. All right, uh, really, 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 you saw me coming. You saw me coming. I guess that wasn't even that much of a problem. Who cares? That didn't even take more than a couple of seconds off me. All right, where is this drop-off point? Drop-off point is downstairs, so we got to go downstairs. Then we could end this. All right, good. So... I, I really am thinking that I'm going to continue this playthrough. I, that, I've said that how many times now? And I think it's mainly because I'm interested. I'm interested to see exactly what it takes to make money in this game. Somebody was asking me, if I only started with 5K, how do I make money? Well, like this. This is the way you make money if you only start with 5K. You run these stupid little delivery missions until you're blue in the face. And that's just it. So this is the admin office in Grimex. Bam. And where... Really? There's no box here? There's the box. Duh. Alright, so we put it over here. And we're going to look at our beforehand. Up oh, there's our box. That was stupid. That was absolutely stupid, people. And you got to see me make that mistake. Did you see it? Contract withdrawn. Contract withdrawn. The box disappeared. It fell to the floor because I looked at my Moby glass. That is the most frustrating thing in the world. And that's not a glitch in the game. That's because yours truly is an idiot. And I am so sorry for that. Yep, we made this run for no reason whatsoever. We crashed a couple of times. It's over. But nonetheless, you got to hear a couple of my rantings. And hear, you know what? Making money in the game is difficult. Uh, I'm going to go into stealth mode. Stop talking and try to make a little bit of money tonight. Thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for liking my videos and continuing to listen to my stupidity from time to time. And you all know the drill. If you like the video, please, please, please click the thumbs up button. If you have comments, put them down below. And if you do subscribe, remember, please remember to click the bell-shaped icon below so you get notified of all my future videos. And with that said, folks, y'all be safe out there. Don't be stupid like me. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.